The McFluff Story, Generation 1, Episode 6. This is Carrots here, and welcome. I thought I'd start this episode with a little bit about Blossom Flower, because she keeps popping up for some reason. She is an evil fairy, and she was put into this world to live on her own, so that she would hopefully flutter around and cause general mayhem. But she seems to have joined the military. It wasn't quite what I had in mind for her, but I've decided to live with it. She's got one of those interesting skins that was made by Moonskin93. And I checked her Tumblr a while ago, and while the skin is there, the link is dead at the moment. But that Tumblr seems to be in a continual state of flux, so you never know your luck. In case you're not quite quite sure. That is Blossom with the military uniform on. If you look on her arms, it looks like she's got tattoos down her arms, but she doesn't. That's part of the skin. It's Blaze, and it's part of the Gods of the Elements set of skins on the Moonskin 93 Tumblr. I have my Sims that have the Gods of Elements skins set to not aging because the Elder skin doesn't have face. And it looks a bit odd with that really peculiar, way out, different skin and an ordinary, plain face. So there she is having a little argument or a little disagreement with Jean Bombay. Now Jean is a witch who I started in a game by himself just to see how many different ways there were I could get him to have children without adopting. He had nine children in the end before I lost interest. I'll introduce you to them as we go around. A few of them are teens already. The one that he's holding in the photo is Brittany. And we've seen her a few times around town. She's been at the greenhouse and also in the library when Jerry was there in earlier episodes. Brittany is a clone of Bunny and they live together in a house somewhere in Dark Harbour. I'll introduce you to them properly later on. Of course, anyone who's been watching my videos for a while will know I can never stick to my original plans if there is some way I can add to the story. So, soon after Jean moved in alone, Valme joined him. Valme and Jean became a couple. They had a son together called Jasper. Meanwhile, I'd managed to use a cheat to get Jean pregnant by an alien who abducted him. It was only later that I found out that witches shouldn't be able to do that. So anyway, Sophia was born. You will meet her in another episode, I think. Then I got Annabelle to move in. So Annabelle is another of the gods of the elements skins. I've forgotten the name of her skin, but she has two sons with Jean. They were both born to her because I wanted to see if the skins get passed on and at this point it appears not. She lives in Cake Island because I've only got one of my gods of the elements in each world. I think I've got about five of them now. And then I added Bess and Bess got cloned and her clone is Belinda who's also a teen. Bess and Belinda live somewhere in Dark Harbour. And eventually, Bunny moved in as well because her clone was already living there with the rest of the family and I thought it only right that she should join the whole household. And one of the women, I forget which one it was, managed to seduce an alien and she actually gave birth to a part alien child. So it's an interesting household that I've split up now and most of them are living in Dark Harbour, but not all. And that is why there are so many Bombays in this world because that experiment got a bit out of hand. Let's get back to Blossom Flower and her shenanigans. That fair-haired father and daughter watching the drummer is Sean Kelly and his daughter Jeannie. They're from Dragon Valley. Just behind the Kellys, it appears that Blossom and Jean are getting to know each other. That's Sally Smith there playing the drums. She was in my library, but I don't remember anything about her. Oh, what's going on there? I guess they know each other a bit better after that one. That Tom Fields that just walked past then as well. He is the one who's got a few issues. He's got a wife with two toddlers living in Dark Harbour. He's also got a girlfriend with a child in Lucky Palms. Things have got momentarily peaceful again. Blossom seems to be watching the entertainment. Not quite sure what Gene's up to, but he, think he seems to be thinking of another fight. Now that the one, the sim with her back to us with the red top on the right hand side 
She is talking to her boyfriend, who is Miles Hansen. She's the old sim that I made years ago and have hardly used. Her name's Fanny Dancer. I was actually plopping her into the world just to live by herself, and then I discovered that he was her boyfriend. So I moved her to, to this world. I'd originally put her into Cake Island. Now that sim that's just walked by with the Egypt outfit on, he is a clone of Jean, and he is the child who aged up to teen all by himself, and I haven't yet had a chance to play him, to get to sort him out. He is the one that I keep saying I've got to get out of here before all the children age up to teen without my assistance. I said one child's already aged up and that's the one. It's James Bombay. He's an evil witch. I might have some fun with him later on. When, when you clone yourself sometimes the game gives the evil trait and that's what's happened to James. I left him as evil because I find the evil trait can be lots of fun sometimes. The teens are sitting down there starting to do their homework together. So there's Blossom coming over. I'm trying to get her to stop that incessant drumming. And that's why she's done this. Otherwise, I've left her to her own devices to just do what she wants. So there's the three teens. Oh, she's going to do a hot head fairy trick. That's Sally Smith. I had a Sally in my inventory. I don't remember making her. I suppose I did at some stage in the past. She just lives in a house by herself at the moment. I don't think she's got any skills, but she probably has some drumming skill now, the way she's playing those drums. So that's what happens when you get given a hot head by a fairy. The three Sims who were sitting on the ground doing their homework, the one on the right just stood up, that's Jean Biggs's clone James. In the middle it's Barry Thompson. We've met him in an earlier episode, possibly of Oscar's childhood. And the other one is one of the green children who is again from an old game and I just put the household down. And I decided that sh the Greens should be related to Jerry because they both spell their surname the same way. But they're not in his family tree because they're distantly related. The one with the blonde hair that Blossom's interacting with at the moment, that's one of the Hanson girls. I think it's Matilda. Her father is Marty. Same as the one that was giving the flowers to Fanny Dancer earlier. That was her brother. So you've... We were introduced to Marty and his family in the last episode of this series. I think that's the proprietor with the long pants on and the light coloured top. Looks like the drums are going again. So Blossom's doing what she's supposed to do. She's scurrying around causing mayhem. That is Miles Hansen, I think, that he is the one that was giving flowers to Fanny Dancer earlier. That is his sister with the blonde hair. They are son and daughter of Marty and Marcy Hansen and they will be half siblings of Patience's children that she had with Marty. Well, it was five of them. So her five elders, including Haley. I think we might leave this crowd at the coffee house. I must admit that I was surprised at the amount of activity going on there tonight. I had control of only one sim and that was Blossom and I didn't do much with controlling her. So it was for pretty much all story progression or just the game and the sims trait getting them in to interact with each other. Blossom's having some more fun. She's after Miles now. She's making some enemies. I think that's what I wanted her to do. I'll stick with Blossom for a little while. And I went back to her house that night. She sleeps with her eyes wide open. And she snores. And she's got three cats. Obviously she had a mother cat that had kits. While everybody was sleeping, I decided to have a bit of a look around the neighbourhood close to Blossom's home. That's Blossom's house. And I found that most of her neighbours in the closest street were members of the Bombay family. Those small houses were copied from the Witch's Village. Oh, and the space car. That's probably Othoxapox Chukapoi visiting his little daughter. I showed you a picture of her earlier. I think she's a child now. He's off home. He lives with his mother and their cat in a house in this world. And his vehicle is the space car. So you'll see it buzzing around occasionally in Dark Harbour. It was almost midnight and I spotted a little witch riding his broom home. So I followed him. Turns out it was Jeremy and he lives in that house house that Othoxapox just left. So I went down to see and there is Bess with her daughter Belinda. Now Bess is the mother of Jeremy and Jeremy's got nine days before he ages up so he's one of those children I've got to be careful of aging up without my permission and he is Jean's son with Bess and Belinda is cloned by Jean. She's a clone of Bess. So Othoxapox and Bess both have the same lifetime wish which is Master Romancer. So I think there's something going on with Othoxapox and Bess. So then I thought I'd better go and check out the home of Bunny, because Bunny is the mother of Bernadette, the part alien daughter of 
a fox, a pox and bunny. Now, a few years ago I wanted to get a badge for having 15 children and I discovered I'd need a male sim have the children with a series of females and I decided to use witches and I made I think probably as many as 15 witches traits that I thought would help them oblige the male sim who was going to try to get 15 babies with them. In the end I got the badge but I only used three or four of the witches and the rest were just sitting in my library waiting to be used and then when I was doing this with Gene to try to see how many different ways he could get babies I decided to start using some of those witches and that is where Bunny and Bess came from I think I might have made Valme extra and there's a whole lot of other female witches in various worlds in this game who were there because they were part of this attempt to get the badge that I didn't actually use them for the badge and so I'm now using them in this big game and there's another badge that I needed a whole lot of male witches for and I forget what that was and I haven't got it yet but there are a whole lot of male witches unattached running around in my worlds and Jason is one of them and the game has matched up Bunny and Jason if you see the traits that my female witches have got they're all very similar they are the ones that are made to be the mothers of the 15 children they've all got she's got flirty charismatic hopeless romantic schmoozer and great kisser and Bunny's got great thumb but she got that as the extra trait from the game. Now back to the current household and Brittany who is the clone of Bunny. She was cloned by Jean and they live in the house that Othoxapox didn't visit. She li they live between the Harmon household and the Racket household and they have a white cat named Cole. Then we come to little Bernadette who's recently aged up from toddler. She was born because I was after another badge and when her mother Bunny was abducted by an alien on their return I got Bunny to capture the alien and add him to the household and then she seduced him and Bernadette was the result and I got the badge. Star-crossed lovers, it was worth it and we've got Bernadette as well to play with. Early in the morning Blossom and the cats are awake and it's almost time for her to go to work. As a matter of fact I think the car is there waiting for her and off she goes. She works at the military base which is in the City Hall and I was watching what was going on there and I was very surprised to see a Thoxapox turn up in his space car and then a witch showed up in a broom and there's a werewolf arriving so they're all going to work in the military career quite a diverse group of military personnel for this little world the time has arrived when the early starters have got off work and here is Blossom doing her favourite activity. She is tending the humble harvest stand at the Alfresco market and that sim in the spotted coat is Sebastian. He's one of the single male witches that are wandering around town and he's having a chat with Blossom. While Jerry's arrived, he's finished his day's work at the science facility and he's there. He's going to be consigning some of his harvestables. It's quite lucrative to consign the harvestables at places like this. To consign you need to choose buy and then click onto the consign tab. There's five humble harvest stands at the market so he'll be consigning to all five of them and then he might even go to the consignment store and sign a bit more there. Rarely buy anything from the humble harvest stands because you get a ripped off moodlet. I will buy things though if there's rare items that I know I'm going to need and we're hard to, they're hard to find. You will often find things at the humble harvest stands that you can't find anywhere else or at least anywhere else for many days or weeks of the gameplay. The team tending the stand that Jerry's at at the moment I think is Gene Biggs. His father is the redhead there, Keith Biggs, and that's Henrietta the blonde talking to. So that's, his, that's Gene Biggs' parents chatting there near the, the humble harvest stand. And Jerry's consigning some more things before he moves on to the next humble harvest stand which is just behind the one he's at at the moment. I don't think anyone's actually tending that stand. It looks like the Biggs couple are just there absorbed in each other having a little flirt and a few cuddles. That won't bother Jerry, he'll just turn his back to them and concentrate on consigning his produce because he needs some extra money. Look at Sebastian in the background practicing his magic on the left of the screen. It always takes what I think is an extremely long time for them to examine all of the produce that's in the humble harvest stand already before they decide to actually buy or consign anything themselves. He puts his coin in and swipes and it should pop up. There we go. Now let's consign some more. We won't consign any seeds, just 
harvested produce that can be sold because he'll want the seeds later on. While I tend to only consign harvestables, I don't think there's any limit to what you can sign from your Sims inventory at these Humble Harvest stands. And there are often recipe books that they can purchase there as well. But I try to avoid purchasing simply because of the ripped off moodlet. Now this Sim who's tending the stand that Jerry's gone to at the moment, she's another witch, but she's married to Walter Thompson. She's Eliza Thompson. I did do a big introduction to them in an earlier episode Episode, one of the very early episodes of Generation 1 and they've got a son who is an early teen and a toddler daughter and I think that might have been the toddler that we could see toddling around earlier. The names of the Thompson children are Barry and Karen. Sim on the left of the screen with the black hair and the yellow top on and shorts is Juliet Green. She's another member of that Green family that's a distant relation to Jerry. Jerry's got plenty more harvestables in his inventory to consider sign so he wants to share it out amongst as many humble harvest stands as possible and then he can go home and get some more out of the fridge. Remember he's got gardeners that are paid to do his gardening for him and every day they put all their harvested items into the fridge. Look he sells something already and you can bet that his total amount of simoleons that he's got at home will have gone up by more than the amount that he got for that produce because he often gets bonuses in the thousands of simoleons on these stands. There's probably a bug but it's quite useful when they're short of money and they need to go to China. It's interesting visiting these lots and seeing all the Sims who come there when you go there too. It's Keith Biggs has gone over there. He looks like he's going to buy something from that humble harvest stand. In the meantime, Jerry's gone to go and have something to eat after his efforts in consigning all of his produce. And there's a little cafe just inside that I've set up in there. I set a barista bar up in this room inside the alfresco market and my sims go there. That dog belongs to one of the Bombays, I think it belongs to Bess. Being on a community lot, there he just sells something else. Being on a community lot, that barista bar is manned all the time by a, an attendant who sells food and drinks to the sims that want them. Looks like Keith Biggs is manning that stand now. Being in the afternoon, I suspect Iris is at work at the coffee house at this point. I'll just go and see what's happening at home where the babysitter is there looking after the baby Dan and the forbidden fruit that Iris planted it looks like it's almost ready to pick. Probably tomorrow, sim days. So we should get the baby another plant sim baby in this episode. We can wait for the baby to be ready to plant to be picked. I'm still very impressed with this babysitter. He's taking care of little Dan just perfectly. All a baby plant sim needs is to be played with and cuddled and sleep. They don't need to be fed, they don't need to be changed. I mean babysitter is doing everything that Dan needs perfectly. After finishing his snack at the Alfresco market, Jerry's gone on to the consignment store where he will consign a few more of his harvest balls after he's finished chatting to the consignment clerk. He's not interested in buying anything today, he just wants to consign as much as he can and in as many different places around town as he can. It's getting late now and Iris should be home from work shortly so after consigning his items he heads off home. Says goodbye to the consignment store clerk and off he goes home. He gets home and the babysitter's still there so he pays him off for his afternoon's work and does a bit of cleaning up around the house, getting ready for Iris's return. Now Iris has a green thumb and when she gets home she decides to have a chat with her mature forbidden fruit plant. It should be ready to pick in the morning. There's an empty cot there already and waiting if it happens to be a plant sim baby. Of course it could be a forbidden fruit which she can either plant or eat. And I don't want her to turn into a plant sim, so she'll be planting it, not eating it, if it is a forbidden fruit. If it's a plant sim baby, then we'll put it in the cot. After she's finished her chat with the forbidden fruit plant, she decides to do a bit of gardening, notice any actual plants growing in it, and then she heads off downstairs to look after the garden that's downstairs. It looks like the gardeners must have reset because they haven't finished their gardening. I had a bit of a problem with the gardeners resetting and I think it's because those trees were growing through the floor so I will move them as I've said before but of course all of this video has been recorded prior to me saying that before or now as well but I do actually move them out of the way eventually. 
Well, early next morning, there was Iris just standing there holding her newly picked plant sim son, Daryl. I didn't get any video of it. I suspect I saw it happen in an awful hurry. She was keen. Now all we have to do is wait for Daryl's imaginary friend to arrive. Then Jerry and Iris can head for China, where they're going to have some quality time together, just the two of them. And the babysitter can come and take care of the two little plant sims. And hopefully we should have a romance blossoming and perhaps even getting close to a wedding for Jerry and Iris as soon as they get back from China. Web so we'll catch up with them in China job. next. While they wait for the imaginary friend to arrive in the mail, they spend some quality time getting to know each other in their half-dead garden. Next morning, the gardeners arrive. Let's hope they can get the whole garden done today without resetting. One of the gardeners wandered upstairs and started dancing to the music before Iris told him to go back to work. These gardeners get up to all sorts of tricks if you're not careful. I've even had them eating cake at birthday parties for children. Eventually, the long-awaited-for imaginary friend showed up in the mail and Jerry gave the boys a l one last hug goodbye before he and Iris set off for China together. And we will meet up with them in the next episode as they arrive in China. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this story so far and I'll see you in the next episode. And don't forget, if you've been enjoying the videos, please consider giving them a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you might like to subscribe, therefore, to prevent missing when I do the next episode of this story or one of my other stories. Bye-bye for now and happy simming.